Welcome to another episode of In Range. This is the Colt Thur 41 caliber Derringer, third model, manufactured in large numbers from 1872 to 1912. In fact, the second most popular Derringer of the Old West. Now, why would you carry a tiny little gun like this into cities that were, you know, of course, by modern parlance and modern understanding, a panacea of firearms rights? Well, it was because in the Old West, almost every city or town had an ordinance or rule against the carrying of deadly weapons within city limits. And for example, here's a picture of Dodge City, no firearms allowed, and the what should be famous Ordinance Number no. 9 put on the books in 1881 by the Earps in Tombstone, Arizona prohibited the carry of deadly weapons within city limits. In fact, the penalty for that included up to 30 days in jail and a $250 fine which, using an inflation calculator, comes out to over $7,000 in modern money, or both, 30 days plus $7,000. So they were pretty strict about that, but then again, as all gun control laws are enforced, they're enforced with, let's say, bias and irregularity. Topic for another video, but if you're interested in the ERPs and gun control, there is a video already on InRange about that. So, that said, you would come into town and you would check your larger firearm that you were probably carrying with you on the frontier, be it a rifle or a single action army or something like that. Check that probably at a bar. You would go into the bar and check it and they would keep it behind the bar. And you would check it back out when you were leaving town. So there was a little bit of a provision that if you were coming or going, you were allowed to carry it. But you couldn't carry it within city limits other than that. So of course you went about town completely disarmed, right? No, you did not. For the most part, a vast majority of people had things like this with them. And you can see by the size of this, very easy to conceal. In fact, it literally is a palm gun. It fits in the palm of my hand. You could put this in a boot, in a pocket. Heck, you could put it under your hat if you really wanted to. And the odds of this being discovered on you are quite low. That said, across the table, like I'm sitting here, a 130 grain bullet at 550 feet per second isn't something I would want to get shot with either. Now, this is chambered in 41 short or 41 rimfire. 41 rimfire kind of went out of manufacture quite a long time ago. Navy Arms brought it back briefly, and you're going to see a lot of data about 41 short or 41 rimfire about it being completely anemic and worthless, including showing like foot pounds, excuse me, like 400 feet per second. And that's true when you're firing the Navy Arms smokeless powder that they manufactured, I think it was the 1970s, so people could shoot their own guns. They absolutely downsize the bullets and downcharge the cartridge to make it as safe as possible to shoot in these very old guns, many of them with iron frames. However, if you reload 41 rim fire short, which by the way, it is possible to do by using 22 blanks with specially manufactured cartridges and load it with a mixture of 3F and 4F black powder, as it was in the day, you will get velocities of 500 to 550 feet per second. That does put this into a, I would not say, powerhouse, but certainly not something I would want to be shot with. In fact, there's a fairly famous report and shooting with 41 short against a man named Fisk, and one round that struck him properly with a, was fired out of a Colt four-leaf clover revolver, chambered in 41 short. The round not only went through his side, it went through his entire body and moved and down into his leg, I believe it was, or his elbow. Regardless, it penetrated his entire torso, and it did kill him. Now, did it kill him immediately? No. So the difference between stopping power and lethality are, of course, two different things. Not necessarily the scope of this video today, but is the 41 short a lethal round? Yes, it is. And is it something that you can carry concealed with you at a card table in a prohibitive environment? It certainly is. And that explains why so many of these were manufactured, and these really were the kind of guns that were carried around towns like Tombstone and Dodge City and others, where the local law enforcement prohibited anyone besides themselves and their friends from carrying guns. Now, I've got some reloads here that I've manufactured with specially milled cartridges for me. Well, you can find that on the internet. And I've loaded them with the proper powder charge. Let's go ahead and go over to the steel and fire a couple rounds. And you'll see that this thing isn't all that really anemic. When it hits the steel, it, it really does hit with some authority. To unload, cock the hammer, open it up, and it has an ejector. I have found the ejector to not be that useful. So you kind of have to pry it out. Take another round from your pocket. Insert it with these reloads. You have to make sure that the primer is up towards the top. Close it and fire again. 
obviously you're not reloading this quickly. There's really not much more to say about this. A cheap, easily concealed, lethal weapon that you could get around the local law enforcement or ordinances with at a card table like this in what is probably a quite dangerous place. You can see the extractor sort of work there, but really, you gotta pull it out, like I said earlier. It's not meant for reloading. It's not meant for speed reloads. This is not going to be a reloading combat weapon. This is going to be something that you fire once, and hopefully, it has the desired effect. Pretty impressive, honestly, when you think about it, how small this is and what it's actually doing. Well, I hope that this video has been interesting to you, not only in terms of debunking some of the myths of the Old West, and the reality of it being really not a very firearm-friendly place, and that guns like this played an important role for people who still needed to be capable of self-defense in places that otherwise would prohibit it. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'm a completely and intentionally defunded YouTube channel. I take no revenue from them. I have no AdSense account, no ads, no revenue from them, not even YouTube Red. Only you, the viewer. And you can support me at patreon.com slash inrangetv, or if you prefer, utreon.com, which is an alternative to Patreon. And this little Derringer and the ability to make these rounds, which I cannot talk to you about on YouTube about how to manufacture them, I'll do a video about that, put that up on maybe for Vimeo or something, um, are all because of Patreon.com supporters. Thank you for keeping In Range alive. If you can't, I totally understand. Just support me in another way. Subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. Thanks for watching.